What is one main cultural difference between Taiwan and the U.S.? One, I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, every time I go to the bathroom, Hello. Hello. May I ask what's your name? I, my name's James. Where yes. do you come from? I am from the USA, Pittsburgh. How yes. long have you been in Taiwan? I've been in Taiwan for just now four years. Why did you decide to stay that long in Taiwan? I wanted to tr travel. I checked out like average income for English teachers and Taiwan seemed like, you know, like one of the best and it's like centrally located. So flights are kind of average price to go to all the other countries, yada, yada, yada. So like, you know, that seemed wonderful. You know, I could just check out all of Asia while working it up and uh, jumping around, you know. So I thought it would be a good starting point. During your stay here in Taiwan, have you encountered any difficulties? I mean, especially in the beginning. My first year was out in the countryside in uh, Yunlin in Beigang. So living in the countryside, which I didn't know what I was gonna do actually. I did not know I was getting shoved into the countryside for my first year. Communication was impossible because I don't understand them and they don't understand me. It's not like Taipei where you can kind of kind of get by. That was definitely difficult. And it was lonely, I'm gonna be honest. Like it was lonely out there. It was cool, don't get me wrong, but like it was lonely. I was like the only foreigner in that entire town. One of my favorite things about Taiwan too is like how safe it is here. Uh, where I work, I would go down the MRT and I'm, my school's kind of far away from the MRT and I don't care to use the buses. They're so infrequent, I get late a lot. So I started using U-Bike and I was on my way home to the MRT from school one day and I left my my bag with my iPad in it in the, in the basket of the bike. And I get on the MRT, I go up a couple stations and I realize I don't have it. And I freak out, I'm like, oh my gosh, someone definitely took that. I go up to the U-Bike station and lo and behold, all of the bikes are gone, including the one that I rode. But my iPad and my bag are just nestled right under the bike, the U-Bike rack. No one's touched it in the 30 minutes I've been gone. And that is a busy station. I was blown away. What is one main cultural difference between Taiwan and the US? One, I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, every time I go to the bathroom, no one uses soap. I mean, what's up with that? I cannot tell you how many times I'm washing my hands and then I just see people just like, woo, water, water, water. I right, buy, check my hair, okay, see you later. Um, you know, that's, that's something that kind of got me for such a orderly, sanitary country. The other thing I'd say that has really gotten me is how anarchistic driving is here. You know, like the US is like challenging, but here, oh my God, it's like, it. You go from like perfect order when you're like person to person, but then you get on those roads and it is full on anarchy. Like you hope to God that there's not a bus or a taxi in your way because they're just diving. You know, they're gonna cross four lanes of traffic. No one, like everyone else be damned. What part of Taiwanese culture do you find mostly interesting? Honestly, like the Taoist religion, like the way they celebrate the holidays, I love it. But when I was living in Beigang, Beigang is home to like the biggest uh, Matsu temple where the, the, the pilgrimage between the two Matsu temples. At one point of the year, they do this thing where they put fireworks everywhere. Like they, they line the streets with like, like firecracker. And they have this challenge where like young guys have to run through the exploding fireworks. You know, I got home from work that day and I come outside and I was, it's like, it looked like a war zone. Like I walk outside, it is just thick smoke. I can't even see across my street. So that was fun. Can you speak Chinese? You know, I don't know, I don't know if that was terrible or not, but I like to tell people I have food Chinese. You know, I've never really studied Chinese, but I kind of got a lot of, a lot through osmosis, like just listening to what they ask me, listening to what other people say, listening to what people around me say. Like it was like, like again, like I learned through osmosis. Like I just kind of absorbed pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've kind of plateaued with that kind of ability. I do need, if I want to do conversation, I need to study. So I learned a lot of like food Chinese. Like I know, like I can go to restaurants and order what I want. I can go and complain if I need to, like, but 
if I want to hold a conversation, I'm like, huh? I have no idea what you're talking about. How do you say in Chinese, um, take away? Take away. Mm. What that? What that? Yeah. <laughs> what that? Neo. What advice would you give to a first time visitor in Taiwan? One, make a day bag. Always bring an umbrella because it's always raining. And bring toilet paper, especially when you leave the city because, gosh, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've been to a restroom that had nothing. You know, like I had to like splash water from the toilet to wash off or like from the sink. If you are to change anything in Taiwan, what would it be? I don't know. I'm not really a pessimistic person. You know, I love Taiwan the way it is. Like, sure, there are things that are different, but like, I don't really complain about it much. You know, I don't have any complaints. Like, I like, I like it exactly the way it is. It's a great country. What do you have in the U.S. that you missed not having here in Taiwan? Number one, crazy. Chipotle. I know people have feelings about it, but honestly, I miss Mexican food. And I know it's not Mexican food, but it is reliable. You know, it's cheap-ish. I can get veggies, I can get rice, I can get all the stuff that I like. You know what else I miss? Roller coasters. Taiwan has like no roller coasters. Where are those at? There's like one in like Yunlin, but it's just like, two, okay, bye-bye. Like, I want some roller coasters, man. You know, I'm from an area that has like tons of roller coasters. Have you ever dated here in Taiwan? Yeah, I did. What's uh, maybe a dating culture, a difference in dating culture of Taiwan compared to the US? Getting into an actual committed relationship, things can get difficult, especially with, and I honestly assume, I haven't done it, but I assume any international relationship, there's going to be pretty vast cultural differences. You know, I try to be as accepting about these things as possible, but we all have our belief systems, we all have what we've been raised with, and sometimes those can clash. Sometimes language barriers can clash. You know, you think you're going to walk in to a, to a foreign rela in international relationship where you guys kind of don't speak too much of each other's language and like, oh, I can learn Chinese, she can teach me Chinese, or he can teach me Chinese, and I can teach them English, and that is not true. That is not their job. They are not your teacher. You are going to get frustrated so fast, it's not even funny. You know, if you can make it work, you can make it work, but don't expect them to be your teacher. And try to learn as much about the other culture as you can. Because it's very good to be respectful. Do you have anything else to tell Taiwanese people? You guys are great. I don't know if you really like us, but you guys are great. You know, it's fun to talk to you guys. Uh, I try my best. You know, I really like the agongs that like sell me fruit and veggies. Those, he's, he's so nice. He always likes to give me chilies. Uh, hi, agong, if you, uh, if you watch YouTube. I don't know if you do or not, but hi. Anyhow, Lee Ha. Uh, but yeah, you guys are beautiful. Stay beautiful. Okay, thank you very much and welcome to Taiwan. Thank you.